Zeria, Zerima Kora, Maria Makaya, Repete Ria Blaria Kataya. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. The Bible says that end your praises shall not depart from my life. Oh God. Kataraba Kataraba Busha Kataraba Busaya. You are praises, Lord. You are praises, Lord. Our praises, O God. Praises unto you, O God. Cannot depart from our lips, O God. Erano se katura baria mazakura mashira. Reparia katariba ria zakata. Eriano se klariba rosa bana shata. Erima kaya zapoya. Eriano se klariba shata. Erima okaria barina. Erima mazora mashira ria barina. Keteria makanda ria. Reba kaya makanda ria makaya. Repe keteria mazokla ria mashata. You are the I am the I am. Oh Lord. You are the rock of ages. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh Lord, who can compare to you? Who can compare to you, Lord? Who can compare to you, Lord? The shaka taraba kataraba kata, the faka taraba kataraba kata, the kete rebosi kata, the mande rebosi kata, the mande karia mashando re mazakura, the kete 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 kete, the mazura ba shaka taraba zuka.
Lord, we have thrown you up above. We have thrown you up above, oh God. We have thrown you up above, oh God. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the Asian of David. You are the Rock of Ages. There is no one like you. There is no one like you, dear Lord. There is no one like you, dear Lord. There is no one like you, dear Lord. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. Oh, Makande Rosi Kataya. Erimande Rebo Kote Riba Kataya. Erimanderina Mashaya. Oh, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter number 51 and verse number 17, that mine, oh Lord, oh, is a broken spirit, is a broken spirit, and a contrite heart of God. And my Father, the Bible says that such you cannot despise, such you cannot despise, oh God. Ours today, ours today, a broken spirit, and contrite heart of God, that you can never despise, oh God. Lord, Oh, 
We give you all our worship, oh God. Our worship belongs to you, oh God. Our worship belongs to you, oh Father. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. In your sovereignty, we worship you. To not keep us even out to go for a born. To not keep us even out to go for a born. To not keep us even out to go for To not keep us even out to go we give you praises of God. We give you praises of God. As the Bible says, that and our praises unto the Lord shall not depart from our lips of God. It is our confession today, O God, that our praises, O God, praises unto you, O God, can never depart from our lips. O God, we are you created us to worship you. You created us to worship you. Oh, my Father, we have gathered here to worship you. Oh, our God, may our worship rise unto you. May our worship rise up to the throne of grace and mercy. May our worship rise up. May our worship rise up. May our worship rise up. Oh, God, our worship, our worship, our worship is the worship of God's spirit. Oh, and the broken heart. Oh, Karona Maza, a parida la costa riba, repaca costa, a ria costa rima cado, ragosa ria bacaya. Oh, Lord, you are the ash of things, you are the rock of places, you are the one that says not, you are the one that changes not, you are the one that says not. Oh, God, what is that that you cannot do? Oh my God, what you cannot do does not exist. Oh Parasota, Remaka Torabaya, Remesekateria, you are the God, the greatest deliverer, you are the Lord, our present help in times of need of God. Oh Father, your name is a righteous name, your name is a mighty name, your name. Is the one that the Russians run to reach and they are saved. Oh God, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Parano Sakata, Erema Costa Rica, Erema Tante Sekeria. Hallelujah! 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 That's the first day.
Again, you have gathered us as a congregation of righteousness that, Lord, we may come together and partake at the table of Jesus even as we, are sh we share the bread of life in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Father. God, you have spoken once, twice we have heard you, that all power belongeth unto you. And we, your children, we are here. We know that we are expectant. And Lord, you never join um, the brethren together in vain. Therefore, we have an assurance and we are guaranteed that you are going to meet us at the point of our need. May you heal us those who are sick. May you deliver us those who are bonded. May you show us the way those who are in darkness. May you make a way where there is no way. Father, may you proceed before us, O oh God. We commit ourselves before you as we bleed the blood of Jesus Christ upon each one of us and even those who are joining us online and the ones who are joining us hereafter. For this we pray, believing and trusting. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. One more time, let's appreciate our God as we release our wonderful praise and worship team to have their seats in the mighty name of Jesus. We may have our seats. Amen. I want to welcome all of us in the house of God. What a joy of fellowship, brethren coming together as a family to share the bread. And the bread is ready. We can only partake in the presence of our Father. I would kind, kindly urge those who are very far behind, please, if there is a seat in front of you, occupy the space. Amen. Jesus said, occupy the space till I come. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Ama tunakata na hiyo. Aliwambia wangoje. Amen. Yeah, he told them to wait, to tarry until he comes. So you can wait anywhere. Amen. So long as they are our brethren. My name is Pastor Josephine Bogwa. I am born again. I love Jesus Christ as my personal savior. He chose me before I chose him. And he's chosen me and separated me for his good work that he has called me to do as I walk with him, with the Holy Spirit of God directing and instructing me. And I love him so much. I want to welcome our online family. You are so much welcome. And thank you for choosing Jesus Outreach to be the place of worship this uh, Thursday evening. I know we will be blessed. The presence of God is here with us. And as we know, we've been told by our reverend many times that in the spirit there is no distance. Therefore, feel appreciated, feel love. We love you with the love of the Lord. I want to acknowledge and appreciate our spiritual father, our bishop. Thank you so much for giving me the chance to be the God's chosen one, to share the bread. I don't take it for granted. I give God all the glory, and even as I appreciate you, because you, God uh, convinced you there is something in me to share with the brethren. May God bless us all in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate our reverend. Uh, on the ground, I love you so much, and thank you for coming. I tell you, where there is the word of God, we'll never get disappointed. We can only be encouraged and be uplifted. You are so much loved and valued. And as we share together, partake the bigger part of the bread and eat it because it will help you in the journey ahead. Amen. Now this evening, I want us to share something that uh, I've been meditating upon my mind. And uh, we are just sharing. You know this, uh, the word of God written in the Bible, it is the word of God. Inspired by God, we were preached to on Tuesday. And there is nothing new except the revelation that God releases to his servants. Amen? So as we read together, it's the same way you read the Bible. The understanding may be different, and even the revelation may be different, but the word is one, and we read it the same way. So we are not uh, sharing something different. We are sharing the word of the Lord. 
um, I've been meditating upon, and of course it has happened to me, upon waiting upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord. I know the seasons we are living in, the blood is too hot because of the things that are surrounding us. Praise the name of the Lord. We are so overwhelmed by voices. We are so overwhelmed by activities. We are so overwhelmed by what we see with our eyes. We are so overwhelmed by the plans of our lives. Like earlier this year, I know many of us made those uh, zinaitu anini resolutions. We made them. But along the way, zinakujanga ziki melt. We don't know where they go to. And especially this moment, the moment and the season of the unknown. And so I've been meditating upon, waiting upon the Lord. I know one or another time, you have gone to a restaurant or a hotel and you ordered some uh, coffee or a chai and mandazi. Mandazi is always ready, but maybe kama, if you want warm, utambiwa ungo, ungo je. And you sit, you have your seat, and you are patient waiting to be served. When you go to a stage, all of us to lipiti kwa stage, you have to stand at a position where the car you want to board in, itakupeleka the route you want to go. All of us to lead a stage. And we waited. We never whistled, ama we called and shouted, where we gari kuja unibebe. Because in Guinea, they are personal vehicles. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We went and stood and wait until the right vehicle comes. We board, we alight at Karura, and then to Nateremuka we come to church. Ata to Siende Bali. Today in the evening, every most of us, the singles, na wengine kama sisi wa mama, tutaenda nyumbani in the kitchen, and you have to prepare what you're going to cook. And you don't prepare like you prepare, you prepare majestically as you cook. Amen? There is waiting. So I checked what the name waiting in the dictionary, not in the Bible, in the dictionary. Nanikaona, waiting is allowing time go till a certain event or function happen. It is waiting time to go until a certain event or function to happen. And as we wait, just waiting, like now we are so expectant because we are waiting to hear the word of God. Everybody is just expecting something. Ambayo itambiwa, you know, to rejuvenate your spirit or to encourage you, we are anticipating. Amen? So while we wait, it is again a process or a journey. We wait. Have you ever been walking pahali, like in town, and maybe you have a friend or you, you received a, a phone call, and, and you stand by a shop, kando sana, so that usigrabi with the phone, unaka kando. You wait and you receive your call. Or maybe umepita pahali, umeambiwa, you're heading to somewhere, and, and you go uh, and you meet a crossroad. You don't know whether to go roundabout. You don't know whether to go right or left. You stand there, ask for direction, and then we move on. So waiting is a process. Waiting is a journey. Waiting upon the Lord is waiting upon the will of God. Waiting upon the Lord, we can as well say is waiting upon the will of God. And there are some several aspects in life that waiting builds or tests in our journey to salvation or our journey to our destiny. And waiting for one, it tests or it builds our patience. Waiting builds or tests our patience. And I want to read in the book of Psalms, uh, verses, uh, chapter 37, Verse 7. Thank you. The Bible says, words of David, rest in the Lord. 
I, I feel like we need to read this all of us because we are in waiting. And so that as we wait, you know, as we wait, it enters us. Eh? Let us read. One, two, three, go. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. We stop there. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Rest in the Lord. Rest expecting from God. You know, sometimes when this word wait comes in my mind, it is like when um, a mother is expectant. We carry babies for nine good months. Carrying. And the weight is coming. The baby is growing. He's becoming heavy. But can I tell you, brethren, no matter the weight of this baby, you, will, you cannot dare be tired. You have kuvumilia. Back at the nine months. Ulijitakia, umepata. Praise God. <laughs> Wahenga walise mwimba wa kujindunga haumi. Na tulitoka hapo sisi wote. So it's a blessing. Ata kue four or five kilos. Mama anavruta. And she has to do her things by the... She has to do her things. Rest. And wait patiently unto the Lord. This comes about like when in this situation we are in, the economy, the businesses, we cannot run away from the uh, reality of life. And reality of life sometimes in a contradict with the word of God. But at times you feel you're so overwhelmed. You are trying from one business to another business. You are trying to understand your children because now is the time we were given. Before then we never understood even our, those small children, how they are. The teachers knew them, but see, the parents, they really complained in this corona season when they were not in school. They said, I, you, how are tea, you know, the things you now and you wanafanya. Praise the name of the Lord. And in, in all this midst of confusion, in all this midst of being overwhelmed, in all this midst of having so much that is surrounding you, sometimes we miss it especially in our salvation, and especially in trusting God. But David is telling us, you see, when the storm is just uh, rumbling and rumbling and rumbling, and you don't know what to do, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not worry or be anxious because of him who prospers in his way. This is another thing that uh, div diverts us away from God. We will see other people are going ahead. Other people, their life is just smooth. Other people, they are getting blessed. And we try to compare ourselves with them. But the Bible does not say so. Because each one of us, even Jesus Christ, there is somewhere I will show you. He went through suffering. I'll show you later on. He went through the same suffering that we are going through. So we cannot compare ourselves like my sister, her life is blessed. No one in her family is getting sick. No one in her family is dying. They are not starving by food or water. Their house is not being closed by the agent because they are lacking um, money to pay the house rent. Their things are just running smooth and normal. We miss it because our destinies are totally different like the way God created us in a unique and a very, very different way. None of us is like the other. We don't think the same. Even twins. Twins. Atakama wanafanana, shilingi na ingine. They never, never, never. They have a very big difference. Amen? Are we together? So the Bible says that do not fret because of them that are prospering because the journey is yours but there is a place David is saying rest and wait patiently 
upon the Lord. I want to show us an example of people who never had patience and what happened to them. I said we are sharing the word of God and it is so sweet to share because each one of us is getting it in a different way and all, to, uh, and all is to the glory and honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read the scripture in 1 Kings, 1 King, ah, 1 Samuel 13, 8. 1 Samuel 13, 8. This is a story we all know. I'll just paraphrase because of the interest of time. And this is King Saul. He had been ordered by Prophet Samuel that Prophet Samuel would come and give a sacrifice on behalf of them so that the Lord may heal the land. And there were instructions that King Saul was given by the prophet of God. Here is king of Israel, and here is a prophet of God. The prophet is issuing instruction for King Saul to wait for him so that he may come and perform the sacrifice. But I want to read this uh, scripture, uh, 1 Samuel 13, 8 there. Then he, King Saul now, waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. King Saul waited for seven days, and he started to worry because people are starting to move away from him. People are starting to mistrust, to, to lack trust in him. They are getting tired because the prophet is not coming. And so he is discouraged, and he don't know what to do. So Saul said, bring a burnt offering and a peace, and peace offering here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now it happened as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might greet him. And immediately he performed the ritual of the sacrifice. The prophet arrives. And he found that King Saul had proceeded by giving out the sacrifice. That was not the instruction. That was not the desire of God. Because there is the way they had walked together with Prophet Samuel. And he knew what he wanted to do. And so Prophet Samuel was very angry. And, and he talked to, to Saul, what have you done? He even told him, you've done foolishly. He was so uh, he was so. Uh, sad that he could not wait for the prophet. This is the problem we have. The problem of anxiousness and the problem of worrying. Because the people are going away. Because the people have, are lacking a trust in you. Because the people are doubting you. You move away from the instruction and the order of God. Prophet Samuel was not happy and the story goes on and we know what happened and it was a, a really tough time for King Saul because even the kingdom was, uh, was like it, it has just ended. He was told there and then, I have chosen for myself a king and his kingship like came to an end. There was no communication between him and his God. He has done it wrong. All because he thought that everything, this sacrifice I am giving is all about my strength. It's all about my wisdom. It's all about my power. It's all about how people will see me. Sometimes we get it amiss, brethren. And in this case and time, it is good to know the season we are living in. We are living in the last days that were prophesied long time ago. Things are not the same we used to know. So if I have my race here and I am going on the east and you follow me on the east, you know, you know just following, you do not know why I'm following, you'll get it amiss. Praise the name of the Lord. And that calls us again to have the discernment of the Spirit of God that wherever direction we are moving in, that whatever we are doing, it is in alignment with the will 
of God. We go to the second one. I'll go very fast. It is the prodigal son. This one we see it in Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 24. Now, this son knew that the father had really worked hard and they had all any man would desire. And as the scripture says that a good man leaves inheritance to his children's children, the father had done it and the son could see it. But now again, kitu ikaingia kwa mawazo. Akaona ya kwamba, hii maliote kuna siku inaweza fika nikose. And so he asked his, his portion. See his life afterwards. The way he went and missed around. The way he went and lost his dignity, his identity, his sonship. But I thank God that he came back to his senses. Akarudi nyumbani. Bless the name of the Lord. But even when he came back, you know, the, the mark the, the father had given him before he left, it had already changed. The father will forgive, yes. The father will receive him, yes. But the father would have learned that this son can do this and this. So, anakana yeye kiwerevu. So that another time, the same demon will not enter him and come to ask for more. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, that is another portion that we see a lack of impatience working. And these people regret. And later in life, where you say, I wish I knew or uh, I regret. A very, very bad uh, sentence to, or a, a very bad um, thing to say, like I wish I knew. I want us to read another scripture in Romans chapter 5 verse 4. Yes. Uh, let's go kidogo nyuma. This is about Jesus. Romans 5, 4. Uh, I would love to start from one. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have access by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. So there will be tribulations. There will be suffering. There will be misfortunes. There will be stumbling. There will be disappointments. They were there even at time of Jesus Christ. This is Paul speaking. And he is saying that not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation pr produces perseverance. Sorry, I was confusing. This is about Paul. And there they are going through tribulations and he is encouraging us also to glory. Can you imagine that? To glory in tribulations. Why? Because tribulation will produce perseverance. Tribulation will produce perseverance. Perseverance brings patience. You know, it's like um, you, you, usasa najua, kuna saingina unaona maneno ina, ina nipotea, na, na ina haitoki vile, vile mawazo yako, iko quick, kukapcha what I want to say. Eh? But, saingine, kuna mtu, anaweza kuniam, kushau, I mean, atakuwa na moto sana, aniambie, ashout kijina, eh, na mini kumbuke. You know, we are living at such a time that things are happening so fast and we want to, to hold them you know by our own strength but it won't work we will be very disappointed because waiting upon the Lord requires us to be patient praise the name of the Lord waiting upon the Lord remember it's not how well we know that thing will work for us 
It is not in our wisdom. It is not about winning that battle we won yesterday. That was won by a different grace. Today's battle is different. It will come with a new formula. So we cannot apply yesterday's formula to win today's battle. And if we try, we end up disappointed. That is why we are being taught that waiting upon the Lord produces patience. And if we allow the patience of God to come in us, we will have self-control. How do we have self-control? You will have uh, information in your mind and you are able to choose between where to react, where to, to silence, and where not to do anything. Praise the name of the Lord. And patience is not easy, my sister, my brother. Having patience is not easy, especially patient, waiting for God. Praise the name of the Lord. It is not easy because unafinua, patience will bring your identity close to you. When you have patience, you bring your identity much closer to you. And through that patience, if a certain issue happened and you reacted very fast, sijui kama usha wai ingililia vita, ama ukafanya biashara, ama ukajipata tu kwa group, ama tu ukajipata, Kitu tu ikafanyika penye uko. And then afterwards, you ask yourself, what did I do? What was I saying? Sijui kama usha wai jipata. And you say in your heart, I wish ninge, ninge fanya hivi. I wish ninge enda hivi. I wish ninge, I wish, I wish, I wish. So patience introduces us even to our own self. Because remember, we have their own self that is, uh, bought with a price by the blood of Jesus Christ, the salvation we received. And again, we have the own self that we have as a person, as an individual, the way you carry yourself, the way you know yourself. And then kunaio ingine, the way God bought us and the way he is walking with us and the way he is teaching us and the way he's releasing his grace upon us in our lives. So patience, may God give us the grace even to have patience in difficult moments, in challenging times, that we may become winners like Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Waiting upon the Lord produces obedience. When we wait upon the Lord, it will produce uh, obedience. When we obey God, he releases his instructions upon our lives. Remember Abraham and Isaac when God asked Abraham to offer his only son as a sacrifice at Mount Moriah. Remember this was an only child after many years of uh, praying and many years of lacking a, a seed from the womb. And now God comes and tests the faith. The Bible says God Test, was testing the faith of Abraham through obedience. So as we wait upon the Lord, it will be required of us to have the obedience in God. Romans chapter 5 verse 19. Romans chapter 5 verse 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience, Many were made sinners. So also, by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. I want to pause at that. By one man who disobeyed God, the first man he created, the disobedient fell in the face of the earth. By one, I want us to talk, by one, one man. By one man, the Bible has told us, through one man, Disobedience came to the face of the earth. And through one man, and again, through one man, disobedience for us, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's disobedience, many will be ma made righteous. 
Thank you, Jesus. Through one man's disobedience, many were made dis disobedient. Am I correct? They were made sinners. And through one man who, who, who practiced obedience, many were made righteous. And here I'm reminded of Jesus Christ. He was the only one who, ob who sacrificed his life. No one in heaven, no one agreed to open the scroll. No one agreed to come and be a lamp offering of sacrifice for our redemption to our Father. Jesus Christ said, I will go for the sake of those people that you created to be brought back to you. That is redemption. So now I take a pause like, by us obeying God, we will make many obey his word and follow his ways. Praise the name of the Lord. By one act of disobedience, we, tr we, 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 we carry along so many souls. One act of disobedience. We carry along very many souls into that disobedience. But one act of obedience, like the way you came for fellowship, many will be drawn. They will want to know that God. They will want to know that desire you have. And one day, one time, not maybe next week or next week, but one, they will desire to come and they will bring you along because you obeyed one time, you heard the voice of God, you came for fellowship, you came to eat with the brethren, and now because of that disobedience, somebody else will have the desire to obey. Praise the name of the Lord. Now that tells me we are seeds. Whatever we do, the way we speak, the way we carry ourselves as brethren, we are seeds and we live in the midst of witnesses. So in all our actions, they are put into record. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is better and may the grace of God abound as we obey even as we wait upon the Lord. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. May the grace of obedience be released upon our lives. Through, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Let's pause at that. Though he was a son, this is Jesus Christ. Yet he learned, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Jesus Christ. So he grew just like us mortal men. And he learned through all that he went through, the challenges, the rejection, the mockery, everything. He learned through it. And he learned the obedience of God. Praise the name of the Lord. He would have op opted, I am a son of God. Automatically, I am obedient. I am a son of God. Automatically, Mungu ataondoa disobedience from me. He would have ignored and said, my father cannot let me, uh, strip me naked. My father cannot agree my disobedience to be seen by the people I'm leading. But no, he went through the process. And through what he went through, he learned Jesus. He learned. I want you to capture that word. He learned. Alisoma. Alisoma kuwa mtiifu. Kama vile sisi pia tunasoma kupitia mambo yenye tunapitia. Kupitia mambo aliopitia na kupitia mambo tunayopitia. Yesu alisoma kuwa mtiifu na sisi pia tunasoma kuwa watiifu. Tumashika hiyo point. Because he went through. And so if he overcame those challenges, if he was able to obey, who are we not to obey? May the grace of God abound in us, even as we hear the word of God and his instruction and his order as we obey, so that we may bring those others who are many. We live in the midst of witnesses. You may not know who follows you. You may not know who watches you closely, but it is my prayer that this day we will obey God that we may bring many to the kingdom and that Lord God will bless us because that is the greatest mandate he gave us, to preach into the whole world, 
bringing disciples in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so that all of us at the end of the journey, at the end of this life, we will receive a reward. Amen? We will be rewarded. It is not in vain. It is not in vain, my brother. Uh, another point I want us to look on as we wait upon the Lord is wait in prayer. This is the most difficult one, <laughs> the most tempting one, that uh, brethren, we find it, we, we sometimes love it, we sometimes uh, in, inaenda, tunaona tumeomba sana, inaenda, ama saingine tunachoka, Sometimes we say to konastoki ya maombi, tumeomba sana, but prayer is prayer. Ambia jirani yako, prayer is prayer. It can never, never, uh, haiwezi linganishwa na kitu ingine, and you cannot exchange it for anything. Romans 12, 12. Re uh, I will start from... 10. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving in the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, now get this, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. This is another one. That we should be patient in tribulation as we continue steadfastly without stopping, without murmuring, without whining, as we continue in prayer. This tells me our Father is always ready to hear us. Our Father is always ready to listen to us. Our Father is always ready to attend to us. If only we do it steadfastly, if we do it in continuity, if we do it like today we have done a prayer, the next moment you enter the prayer room, you will do it like you never did it some other hours or some other days before. And this is what Paul is saying, that we rejoice in the hope, the hope of glory. We rejoice even before we are given the desires of our heart. We rejoice even before our bodies are healed. We rejoice even before we know there would be a corona treatment. We rejoice even before we know where CBC education is taking us. Praise the name of the Lord. We rejoice before we know. Hata hiyo biashara nimefungua juzi penye inanipeleka. Hata kama hujauza leo. Anatuambia rejoice. I'm, I'm getting as excited. Sasa i inafanya ni rejoice. Because it is hope. Hope for things that are not as, they are not, they are hoped for. Haziko, but they will come. And as we hope in the God, we are upgrading our faith. And thus provoking our father to release his blessings upon our lives. So we rejoice in hope and patient in tribulation. What is the tribulation that is surrounding you? What is the tribulation that is making you cry? What is the tribulation that is making you have sleepless nights? What is the tribulation that you feel like you want to give up? What is that tribulation? The Bible says, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting this point? Continuing steadfastly, telling him, Lord, you are worthy. Even in this situation, you are still God. You are above all, above all powers. You are above every challenge. You are above every situation. We steadfastly continue in prayer. And we release anxious and worry. Because he is in the throne and he is in control. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, how I love Jesus. As we wait upon the Lord, number four, we wait in thanksgiving. We are winding up. We wait in thanksgiving. 
And this one time me meenda, but we thank God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Now this one, let me paraphrase it just a little bit. It got me very, you know, I was preaching to myself. Because um, last, when was it? Last week? I think last week. Last week, something happened to me, something that has never happened to me. And I guess it was about anxiousness when we received the, the, the death of our sister. And I think it never sank the way I would have expected it to sink. And I started feeling I'm not happy. I, I'm just restless. Nothing makes me happy. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to go anywhere. I was just there. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my God. Was it so? <laughs> it was bad. I did not know myself anymore. And I, when it reached a point, I... But I just feel a, that bad feeling... And I couldn't pray the way I, I pray. And so I went to the doctor and, and I explained to him. He, he was shocked. He was very surprised to see me. You know, the way I'm, I, I love laughing and all that, it, it wasn't coming out. Now, you are not sick. To copy my pressure, to copy my pass, your heartbeat. Akanyambia, you are okay. You are good. Akanyambia, you just go and relax. How do I relax? I've been relaxing. I've been in the house. I don't want to go even in the market. But then I realized I was very anxious. I was worried about my sister. I was anxious. Maybe I, I, I overthought. Thoughts can take you far. I overthought about her life, the children, and all that. And I told God, I'm tired. I'm just tired. Please take these thoughts away. The Bible says that the mind that was in Christ Jesus to be in us, and I started to confess, and I started to remove those, those mind and those thoughts, and I was back again. So when I am speaking to you, it is something that has really, really taken me a journey, and I thank God because it has taught me how to wait in all these things that we are learning today. And it's biblical because we are, we, are, we are taking them from the Bible. Now, waiting in thanksgiving, the Bible says, Hapo chapter 4, verse 6, uh, let's start five, 5, verse 5. But to him who does not work, but believes on... No, no, no. Give it to me. Mine is lost. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Yes, yes, let's start here. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Six, be anxious for nothing. Come on, let's read it together. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Wait a minute. Can you read it like you read unasoma ukijiambia mwenyewe? One, two, three, go. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to who? To God. Be anxious for nothing. When this COVID came last year, it was another season because we never used masks. We, never, we were never used for school closing for a whole year. We were never used to closing jobs. Many people lost their jobs. We were never used to the uncertainty that came. But even though we would be anxious and worry, we would not help ourselves. Thank God that it is, everything is, it has a time and season, like Solomon said, because along the way, in the midst of staying in the house, in the midst of losing jobs, in the midst of our children staying at home, in the midst of even churches closing, there are some things wanapata za kusuluhisha hii ugonjwa. 
We are not yet there. We are not yet there yet, but at least something has happened. Along the way, kukakuwa na mask. But the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Because ata kama hakunge kuwa mask, sanitizer, and all that, how, we, how would we have helped ourselves? The sickness is a time bomb. It has been dropped. None, not all of us are doctors. Even the doctors themselves are overwhelmed. Now, being anxious, it takes your mind away from the hope of God. It takes your mind away from the faith God has put in you, that the faith that works in us, the, the faith that we, we help us to walk in the way of God, because we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, there could be sickness, but the Bible says by faith we should walk in the hope of glory. God, Jehovah Rapha, who heals all our sicknesses, and we invite him in our lives, and we tell him, you who heals all sick sickness, walk with me, but not anxiousness. Because when we go, I can, I can get corona, I can, I can be sick, not even corona. There are many sicknesses li like cancer. It has killed a lot of people. And so be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made to God. The same year, my dad, my, my, my father, he was diagnosed on that March when there was lockdown with leukemia cancer, the blood cancer. And now he was admitted in hospital. We are here, uh, we are here, we are surprised by this huge sickness in the name of COVID-19, and it has hit Kenya, it has come, and we are going through this lockdown and now my dad is diagnosed. He is admitted in hospital. And at the same time, he doesn't have blood in his body. And the blood we are trying to, to, to look for, it was that time the blood was being sold, I don't know by who, but the blood would not be maintained in our hospital institutions. So it's like when we buy some points of blood and the, the doctor tests, and they already want to, to go and attend to my father, the blood disappears. There came a time, we, 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 now the lockdown is there, they cannot come. We, my brothers and sister, we, they, we cannot go. And so we tried to search for blood here in Nairobi, and uh, we are promised, we are told, come for it, certain date, but when we go, there is no blood. That is what I'm talking about. We were there. This is a very, very critical sickness, chronic leukemia. It was uh, tested in South Africa. And now we are here. The blood is coming. The blood is going. The patient is waiting. But we told God, we will not be anxious. Because even if we would love our father, however, how big, how much, we can't help. We can only help through what? Through prayer. And that is what we did. We kneeled, we prayed, and we prayed, even those who are handling the blood. We prayed for those doctors. We prayed the blood to match his blood and to work for good. And today we have a testimony. My father is whole. My father is in good health. Now he's ministering. He's working by himself, and we thank God. We give God all the glory. Now my question is, even though we be anxious, how are we going to move ourselves from this challenge? Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible is telling us, but in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, even in that situation, let your request be made to God. There are certain things uh, that happen and uh, I was looking at these five magic words that our children are taught in school. That one I'll just go through because of time. We will catch up upon them another time. And one of those magic words is thank you. You know, as brethren, we don't use this word more often, except when our expectation is met. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Or when you feel the time is right to say thank you. But thank you, tuta, this, io, io, tuta we will revisit. <laughs> yes, they are taught about excuse me. They are taught about pardon me. They are taught about please. They are taught about sorry. But I want to post a bit and say one, se one or two sentences about thanksgiving. Every one of us, we are where we are because somebody was used by God to help us. Is it true? Every one of us, every one of us, including our parents, including our teachers, including the man of God, including those colleagues and associates, those we work with, everybody, we were helped to be somewhere at some point. And even us, we have helped many, many people to be where they are. But it becomes a, 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 a sum of, a something of discussion when thank you is not enough uh, given back to us. You see? We want to be told thank you more often and we forget what we have done. Can I say this? The, the more time that we don't say thank you or appreciate, we close the door of more blessings or more gifts or even promotion at our places of work. Thank you is a magic word. That's what our, our children are taught in school. They say thank you for the sweet. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really happy. You feel provoked to do it again. But as believers, more often we forget. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we be thankful to God even if things are not working? Even if uh, we cannot see the way forward, we know he is in control. Where we are, he is telling us to wait upon him. And we should, one of the ways we should wait upon him is by thanksgiving. You know, you take a pause. Yes, it has happened. Nimeambiwa kazi meisha. What do I will express myself like a human being? But after crying and praying, you say, God, I thank you for the closed door. I thank you because you have many doors you have planned for me. I know you even have very many better ones. Kindly, Father, I pray, please position me that I may be able to discern the door you are about to open in my life. That I'm able to discern the door you are about to open for my family. That I'm able to discern the door you are about to open concerning my children. You know, we just say thanks. Mwambia mungu asanti. Because where you are, there's somebody looking upon you and saying, if I would be like so and so, I would be gladly, I will gladly serve my God without stress and without strife. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Quickly, we look upon benefits of waiting upon God. Number one, there is divine protection and preservation. When we wait upon the Lord, Upon the four points we have read, there is divine preservation and there is divine protection. Because we will not walk in our own ways. We will not go where we think is right. We will walk through his divine instruction and his divine order. And where God has issued or guaranteed or given his own divine ways, we cannot be stumbled. We cannot fall. He will never ashamed us. He will direct us where he will glorify himself. Number two, we know and understand God's sovereignty. We will know his power. Because of such a situation that you are in or you have been through or you will go through. Because it has happened, you've not given up. You've not moved from the position of your intimacy with God. You will see his greatness because he will send his angels. He will send people. He will send even the unexpected people to come and rescue you just to show his sovereignty and showing you that, my child, you are always in my mind. And as I promised, that till the end of the ages, I will hold your hand. I promise I will keep and I will see to it that it has come to pass. Praise the name of the Lord. The, it shows us another benefit. 
we will know the sovereignty and understand the sovereignty of God. Number three, we are able to focus and know our identity. When we wait upon God, you know for sure, in real and in truth, who you are in God. As a child of God, you will know your assignment. As a child of God, you will know where you have been commissioned. As a child of God, you will know when to step in, when to step out. You will know when to open the door and when to close the door. Praise the name of the Lord. We are able to focus on our own identity in Christ Jesus. Number four, as we finish, we get a trust. After all is said and done, after using all our strength and energy and, and asking for advices and doing everything that is required of us as brethren, we enter rest. And when you enter rest, you give him the free will now to drive you where he wants you to be. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray that this day we wait upon the Lord. No matter what happens, shikilia imaniyako. You know Elijah was fed. He was not work. I'm not saying people to be lazy and not to work. Please get me right. But he was fed by the ravens. Nyamachoma, our reverend, tells us. Anatuambianga, he was fed by the ravens. So, yote ikifanyika. Yote ikimwagika. Yote ikiisha. Be at rest. Because God still needs you for the next move of revival, for the next move of his glory, for the next move of your manifestation. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. May God give us grace to wait upon him. May he give us patience. May he give us obedience. May he give us a, that urge of prayer and help us even in thanksgiving so that our character may be made, so that our yes be yes, our no be no, so that we do not become strangers to our God, so that we serve him effectively, and so that he uplift us for his own glory in the name of Jesus. Please, let's be upstanding. We bless God. Father, we worship you. We give you glory and we give you praise. We thank you so much for speaking to us. How we pray that you release the spirit and the grace of waiting upon you, O oh God. There are many instances in your Bible that waited for you and you came through for them. Even when you were late, like in the Lazarus, O oh God, case, you still came and you performed a miracle of resurrection. We are declaring and we are confessing that you are restoring us and you are helping us to recover all, oh, by the supernatural speed, oh God. We know you are still carrying us in your wings, in your arms. We know you are st we are still in your mind, oh God. We thank you because you will give us patience. We thank you because you give us obedience. We thank you because you help us to pray. We thank you because you help us to be thankful people, to give thanks, oh Lord. Always giving thanks, even to our brethren, those people who stood the way to make a way for us. Those people uh, announced our name and we became people to be known. Doors were opened of job opportunities and we are enjoying what we enjoy because somebody was used by you, O oh Lord. We pray that Lord God Almighty, as we walk in waiting upon you, help us to hear your word. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to know that it is your voice, that we may listen and obey to the instructions, that we may listen and obey your word in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus and we pray that, Lord, as we wait upon you, this blood will speak upon our lives, this blood will speak upon our families, this blood will speak upon our, the work of our hands, this blood will speak upon our church, this blood will speak upon our calling and our ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. We love you and we worship you. We thank you so much because of the grace. And we bless your holy name for who you are. We pray, we give you thanks in Jesus' and precious mighty name. And everybody say it. 
Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate Jesus. Amen. Yes, as we are standing, we have come to another uh, session of worshiping our God with our substances. And I urge those online, we have our, our account number and pay bill number. Kindly note it down as we worship the Lord in house. We can be preparing our offerings, our thanksgiving, our tithes, our seed in the name of Jesus Christ. Our online family, thank you so much for joining with us. We will see you again on Sunday early in the morning. You are blessed. You are highly favored. We, we thank God for you in Jesus' mighty name. Bye-bye for now. Amen. In the house, let's give a word of prayer. Father, we bless you for the uh, substance we have carried to worship you, Lord. May you receive it with thanksgiving and joy in our heart. We bless you, Lord, because it has come from the work of our hands. And we appreciate so, so much. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Come to the altar and give our...